everyone. Uh, we have William Stuckey, who's talking about how peering behavior affects the growth of the internet ecosystem and African study. Oh, and there he is. I love it when this stuff works. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, sorry I can't be there with you in, in, in Durban, um, but uh, I'll skip through these slides quite quickly and uh, answer any questions I can. You on the first slide? Okay. Um, <clears throat> then can we have the second slide, the agenda, please? Uh, if my computer will wake up. Um, okay, what we're going to be talking about today is, is the fact that we carried out a DNS Africa market study for ICANN, and Mark Elkins has just been speaking, was part of our, a very a key member of our team. Uh, I'm going to tell you about, about our study results about what we found about IXPs in Africa, why IXPs are important, and a comparison of IXPs with internet penetration, and some summary comments. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of the next slide, please, the DNS Africa market study for ICANN. Um, <clears throat> the, in terms of background and scope, we, um, we, we looked at 54, all four, 54 African countries listed by AFRINIC as being part of the Africa and, uh, region. Um, we identified their strengths and weaknesses in the industry ecosystem within the region, and we developed recommendations how to advance the industry. This was particularly aimed towards the DNS industry or the domain name industry, um, but we did look at a whole lot of other issues as well. Um, and we also explored options for establishing a DNS observatory. And the graphic that you see there shows the price per megabit per second in US dollars purchasing power parity, where the darker colors are most expensive and the most expensive in Africa uh, at that at the time of this, this, this graphic was drawn was Chad at around three thousand US dollars per per um, per megabit per second compared to Ghana, which is uh, I forget the number, but it's under 10. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the people who, who did this were um, fr from the SSCF, from a APC, and the contract was in fact in the name of the SSCF. Uh, the APC, the Association of Progressive Computing, provided a lot of the, the other, other skills that we required, and then Mark and myself had our companies involved as well. Um, and we were, had a multilingual team, and we had people from all over southern and west Africa, and one of them flitting between Brazil and, 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 and Portugal, although he's actually a South African. Um, we had four different way, me, methods of, 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 of um, gathering the data. First of all, we had an online survey in four languages, English, French, Portuguese, and Arabic. And Mark was clever enough to make the Arabic read from right to left, if, if that was selection was chosen. Uh, we had six different questionnaires for registries, registrants, registrars, resellers, regulators, and ISP managers. And if I need to explain any of those terms, I will do so with pleasure. Um, we also looked at zone file analysis. Um, we looked at those CCTLD zone files and GTLD zone files that we had access to. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough access to enough of them, but we certainly found some significant results from that. And we identified uh, what we considered a significant website. In other words, something that was bigger than just a placeholder. We looked at where the website was actually hosted, in which country, was it hosted in its home country, was it hosted elsewhere in Africa, or was it hosted outside Africa or overseas. Um, we looked at that, we identified the language um, that was used on the website, uh, where a tag was provided for that, and we didn't require any who is lookups in order to do this analysis. And we also, of course, interviewed some key ICT uh, uh, representatives and role players in the industry, and we were fortunate to have to have a couple of them on our team. We also did a lot of desktop research. Um, we looked at the whole regional ecosystem and we measured, used key measures from various respected publications, including population, income, literacy, cost to communicate. <clears throat> we looked at premium domain names, we looked at payment gateways, we looked at CCTLD processes, and we did quite a lot of research on each of those individually. We looked at the registrars, local and international, we looked at pricing, and we looked at infrastructure. And amongst infrastructure, we included, obviously, uh, not just fiber um, and 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 mobile data, um, but also IXPs and, and and data centers. And one of the things we found, uh, incidentally, in terms of pricing and infrastructure, is that the average European spends under 1% of his monthly income to buy 500 megs of mobile data, whereas the average African spends 15% of his monthly income. So there's a, there's a huge disparity there. 
Um, <clears throat> for, and we did quantitative analysis on all of this, so we recorded metrics for each country code and GTLD domain. <clears throat> we looked at the website location, the language, whether or not they used IPv6, whether or not they uh, used DNSSEC, and we created regional subsets uh, looking at whether the websites are in country in Africa or overseas, and we got some results by, uh, aggregated results by region and by language as well, just to stir the political pot a little bit. So our results, it, we, we ranked all 54 countries, uh, including the Sudan, South Sudan, which doesn't have a CCTLD yet, so it was, didn't rank very well. Um, but uh, we did rank, we ranked all of them. And here you can see the ranking of the top 20 countries um, <coughs> with South Africa leading, leading the, 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 the pack and uh, followed by Kenya, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Tunisia, Mauritius, Algeria, and Morocco. Um, and the DRC and Ivory Coast and Seychelles are, are down towards the bottom of that list. Um, <coughs> I haven't included a, sli a slide that shows the ranking for for all of the countries, um, but you can see that these countries are in the range of two to four hundred, um, whereas the countries at the bottom of the range have have well under one hundred. Um, we um, we develop our own ranking for this because there is no existing ranking, such as the ITU one or or, 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 or the, the, the any of the others that actually covers all African countries. Um, so this is the first time that, uh, that any, not only has anyone done a DNS study or study on the DNS markets in Africa, but it's also the first time that anyone has ranked all 54 countries by a number of important metrics. Um, in terms of the African DNS market, we found 51 functioning CCTLDs. Um, and in terms of the registrars, um, 26 countries have only one registrar, and that's usually the registry itself, and 13 countries have a fully competitive registrar market. And by that, we mean that there are multiple, there are multiple registries, um, there is open access to, 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 um, to the market, and uh, that the registrar um, is using a, a suitable tool to, to automate and facilitate uh, the registration. Uh, accreditation of registrars such as, for example, EPP. Um, the total registrant market, we identified over 5 million African domains, that's including both the CCTLD domains and the GTLD domains, which works out as about 4.4 domains per 100,000 people. And the uh, other studies have claimed figures of 100 to 300 um, uh, um, domains per 1,000 per, per people in in Europe, so this is quite a low low value. However, the value of the domain market uh, in Africa adds up to some 52 million dollars per annum. So it's not insignificant as well, at all. And the key success factors um, for make having a successful internet uh, 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 economy in your country include having the infrastructure to facilitate affordable access to the internet. That requires internet. It requires uh, uh, national fiber backbones. It requires international connectivity. It needs and it means needs adequate last mile connectivity. You need it's digital awareness. Awareness people need to need to be able to know what the internet is, but they also have to be able to read and write. And you have to have conducive policy, regulatory, and governance framework. And you need payment gateways to ensure easy payment of fees. Um, and uh, uh, this can be take several forms. It can be a credit card. Can be uh, an pesa. Uh, it doesn't work well if you have to find a, a hole in the wall and hand over a wad of cash. Um, price is, 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 is a very important issue. Those, uh, uh, a few countries who did really well have prices for CCTLD demands of uh, uh, under $10, um, whereas the average price for the continent is $84. And when people are faced with a choice as paying $84 for a local domain or $10 for a .com domain, take a guess which one they're going to go for. The ease of registration is important. Um, if it's if it's going to take you days and weeks of effort, as opposed to a few minutes, uh, then people are again not going to bother. And that's why things like EPP and having multiple uh, uh, registrars, competitive registrars, is important. In fact, we found we found an inflection point in the in the in the data that one needs more than about 25 registrars 
um, to, to, to make the, the market success successful. And once you have sufficient number of, of, of domains registered under your country, then one reaches a, a critical mass and, uh, and your population will get confidence in that domain and it will start suddenly growing uh, rapidly. So our conclusions from the study were that Africa is a highly diverse region with much poverty and instability. Uh, the DNS market is very small, with about 4.4 domains per thousand, compared with more than 100 elsewhere. But the market is growing fast in some places. However, there are far too many hindrances to growth. I'm not going to deal with those now, um, but we do need to simplify, automate, and expedite domain registration processes. And some countries need to lower the cost of registration. Um, and as I said just now, the average cost is $84 compared to about $10 for a .com domain. And the countries with the highest revenue have the lowest non-zero prices. Uh, that phrase needs to be explained, perhaps. There are four countries um, who, who, whose domains are registered through an entity called Freenom. And they have about half a million domains each. Um, but the Freenom does not sell the domains and Freenom does not give the domains away. Freenom lends the domains to you, uh, to the registrant. And their business model is they provide, they, if a domain is abandoned, they will fill it with advertising. Uh, if a domain is successful or too successful, they will take it away and fill it with advertising. So you don't own the domain. You've never paid for it. You don't own it. And they share a small percentage of that income with the country um, involved. Um, Tokolu, in the, in, which is a small island with 15,000 people, uh, gets is, is the second biggest domain, um, and .tk, and it has uh, and the the, the 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 revenue they get from this makes up 20% of their domain. However, for countries like Mali uh, 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 and Guinea-Bissau and, and and so on, who have populations measured in the millions, the and have rather fewer than uh, have only half a million domains as opposed to nearly 20 million domains, the value that they get from that is in fact very small. Um, so the country with the highest revenue includes country, uh, uh, um, have, have the, although in fact the ones with the lowest prices, uh, but they're not the zero prices. And some countries have got it right. I haven't given you those prices to figure out, but I can give them if you like. So our recommendations for the wider environment in Africa is that internet access issues must be addressed. This is not just cost, it's also availability and performance, and that policies and investments are required to support e-commerce. And countries without local hosting need to build internet exchange points, they need to build data centers, and they need to have built fiber networks. And they also need to ensure that the network operators are prepared to peer with each other. It's no good building an IXP if no one connects to it. And cross-border fiber is vital to all. Um, at the beginning of the century, Africa was spending around half a billion, half a million dollars a, a year communicating with Africa via other countries overseas. This is before we had a lot of fiber and so on. Uh, that has changed, but still a lot of the connections, um, communications between African countries are still going via, 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 via um, up elsewhere, even though we have the fibers. Uh, via the submarine fibers rather than going directly from country to country. Government needs to offer a range of services online and also needs to ensure freedom of expression online as that encourages content creation and as an industry driver. The more content you've got, the more servers you have. The more servers you have, <coughs> the more data centers you have. The more data centers you have, the more people you have looking after them and building them and designing them and maintaining them and doing the websites and so on. So it all becomes a virtual, cir virtual circle. I'm not going to go through these uh, domain these domain name recommendations in, in, in detail because um, they uh, you can read that at your own, own, own pace, um, and I'm going to leave this one out as well. Um, but we can note the cheaper countries sell six times as many domains. Um, so let's look at, let's move on to internet exchange points in Africa. Um, how many are there? We found 66 IXPs listed. And further research allowed us to identify only 36 is currently fully operational. And earlier IXPs that are no longer functioning, like GIXP, which is in Grahamstown, South Africa, and IBIX, which is Ibadan, uh, were important in, in starting um, to grow the infrastructure, um, but we have not included them in our, in our, in our metrics. Um, because they're no longer running. Perhaps we should, in fact, include them when we when we looking at, at the date of establishment of an internet exchange point. Um, 
uh, because that is also an important important factor in terms of how the um, how the economy grows. And so the question we had to ask we asked ourselves is how good is an internet exchange point? And we developed a set of metrics called a figure of merit or FOM to quantify the IXPs in each country, and that's IXPs plural because some countries have more than one. Um, these are the 66 IXPs that are listed by uh, uh, some some entities, um, and there, as you can see, there's a dire lack in sort of Northwest Africa and Central Africa. Um, West, East, and Southern Africa are doing well. So what's our figure of merit? We had a simple index based on the following. First of all, the number of participants uh, at the internet exchange points, the peak traffic, the age of the internet exchange points, the number of internet exchange points, and the prefixes exchange. And I'm going to show you some statistics on, on, on these. Um, in terms of participants at operational IXPs, here you have them as a percentage of the total identified uh, participants, um, and they are in order South Africa, Tanzania, Malawi, Nigeria, Kenya, Angola, Ghana, Mozambique, Tunisia, and Gambia. Uh, with these smaller ones uh, are, are um, expanded out to, uh, on the right-hand side. Um, as you can see, in terms of the total number of participants, South Africa, with its six exchange points, has more than half of the total number of peers in the, on the continent. Um, in terms of peak traffic, we've also done this as a, a share of the total traffic. And here we see South Africa has about three quarters of the total traffic um, on the continent. The order is similar but not identical with South Africa, Tanzania, Angola, Nigeria, Uganda, and Egypt. Um, Egypt has quite a lot of traffic um, given it's not winning so, so well elsewhere um, in terms of our metrics. And here on a logarithmic scale are those same numbers, um, so you can compare them more more, more evenly. And you can see that there's a, in the center there, uh, between Nigeria and, and, and Botswana, Ghana, there are fairly some, some similar levels on a log scale. Uh, bear in mind the log scale does uh, uh, hide the discrepancies uh, significantly. Um, in terms of the age of internet exchange points, this, this graph shows you the sum of the ages of the internet exchange points. So all the internet exchange points in South Africa add up to 45 years, although um, Jinx is only, in fact, 21 years old. Um, going all the way down to Madagascar, which has a brand new exchange point. And this graph shows the growth of currently operational internet exchange points in Africa. You can see there that the first one was Jinx in South Africa uh, in 1996, and the second one was KXP in, 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 in Kenya, uh, then Jinx in, in, in Zimbabwe, uh, and then CIX in Egypt, Mozix in, in, in Mozambique, and, and so on. Um, In terms of number of internet exchange points, South Africa, Tanzania, Angola, Kenya, and Nigeria have more than one internet exchange point still running. Uh, Nigeria lists two, but in fact, there used to be a third one, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and there are other countries who have had, Egypt in particular, has had exchange points coming and going um, with a total of three listed for e Egypt, but only one functioning at a time, it appears, or currently funny. In terms of prefixes exchanged, Again, we see South Africa dominating the the the, um, <coughs> the uh, uh, total amount of traffic. And if you look at the metrics, um, although South Africa, although in 2004, 2005, uh, South Africa went from 3,000 internet users to 4,000 inter sorry, 3 million internet users to 4 million internet users. During that same period, N Nigeria went from zero to 10. Um, uh, so although South Africa is only ranked fifth um, on, by Internet World Stats in terms of num number of, in of Internet penetration rate, um, with Kenya, Kenya coming first, um, the size of the Internet market in South Africa is, is, is significantly bigger than anywhere else in, in the continent so far. And I'm just hoping that everyone else is going to catch up um, because we are not doing as well as we could do. Um, and uh, I, we can see some other countries catching up, and I hope it's going to catch up more. Um, <clears throat> in terms of peering at multiple exchanges, um, as I mentioned, there are six exchanges in South Africa. Um, three of them are run by the Internet Service Providers Association, and they, they call themselves, and they now have a separate entity called INX that runs it, um, with a total of 91 unique ASNs. Um, 
uh, be, being exchanged. Um, with 80 at Johannesburg, 20 uh, in Durban, and 28 in Cape Town. But if you look at this, you will see that there are f nine who are nine ASNs who peer at all three. Um, five peer in, in, in Joburg and Durban, and 12 peer in Joburg and Cape Town, and none peer in Durban and Cape Town who don't also peer in Joburg. Um, which, which leads one to suppose, uh, makes it very clear um, how important Johannesburg is in terms of the of the being the centre of the internet in in, in many ways, um, and for that matter, the economy in the country. Um, jo, the uh, Gauteng does about thirty percent of the economy in the country. Okay, so why are IHPs important? Um, I, there, there are all the obvious reasons, and I haven't put anything in here because I think you already know them. Um, IXPs are important because they allow you to exchange traffic locally, um, which reduces which reduces uh, latency, reduces jitter, improves quality, and in many cases, uh, but not all cases, reduces cost. Um, and uh, uh, and there's the whole virtuous circle. If you've got uh, locally local data data being exchanged locally, then it makes sense to host websites and content locally. If you don't contain, uh, host data, um, exchange data locally, it makes more sense um, to host your data overseas. So if you host locally, then you're going to have, uh, if you have a lo local data exchange, you're going to have local hosting. If you have local hosting, you have, lo you have data centers, and you have the growth of the whole ecology, the whole um, internet ecology around that, with the sale of, of hardware, Maintenance of hardware, the building of building of, of installation, the building of data centers, the building of exchange points, and the, and the building of websites, and everything that goes with that. So one gets a whole lot of skills coming um, from that, and one gets a a, a, a significant um, uh, 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 in, a significant growth in the in 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 in, in, in the industry. In fact. Um, the internet itself has been identified in South Africa as a couple of years ago as making up two and a half percent of the total GDP. But more important, that it's growing at the rate of 0.5 percent of the GDP every year. Okay, so here are some not so obvious reasons about why internet exchange points are, are important. And these these results came directly out of the research that we did. Um, Eleven out of the top 20 countries have had an IXP for more than 10 years. Um, so having it's not just building an IXP now, but it's having an IXP for a while makes it makes a difference. Nineteen out of the top twenty countries have an IXP, and the one that didn't um, was close enough to to to, to Europe um, to be able to effectively peer in in in, in France with a sub forty millisecond um, penalty. Um, and so they they. Although they they disagree about having a having a, a, a whether whether an IXP is, is essential, um, they they have in fact if in, in, in fact have, have reaped the benefits of having an effective IXP elsewhere. And also, countries with internet exchange points have six times as many many domains. So this is a a crude measure of how much bigger the internet economy is um, in. In, in, in an African country that does or does not have an internet exchange. Um, I have a, 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 a not very convincing graph for you here about the relationship between um, <coughs> internet, the presence of an internet exchange point and internet penetration uh, measured as a percentage of the population. And you will see that though there, there is a, a, um, a trend line shown there, there are some countries which are quite far off it. Um, and those include uh, the DRC in particular, uh, .cd. Um, they have had an internet exchange point for a long time, primarily because um, one of our AFRISPA members from way back when uh, set one up. But DRC has had such a tumultuous history over the last couple of decades um, that they have not um, uh, internet access is actually still very difficult. Uh, Mozambique also has had, a, had an internet exchange for a long time, but it's a very poor country until recently. It was the poorest country in Africa. Um, so uh, there is good penetration in, in, in Maputo, but the rest of the country is quite unserved. So again, they fall off the line. Um, uh, uh, Tanzania has multiple exchanges, um, but again, has quite expensive uh, internet access. And same with Malawi 
and I've forgotten what MG is. Um, <clears throat> whereas on the other hand, other side of the coin, we've got, for example, we've got Kenya on the top right hand side. Kenya has very high internet penetration um, and does well on the on the on the um, the uh, IXP figure of merit, um, and so does Mauritius, um, with South Africa and Nigeria, Zimbabwe and Tunisia coming coming second after those two. Um, so in conclusion, internet exchange points are vital vital building blocks for the internet. We didn't look at public versus private peering. Um, I would have liked to have done that, um, and that, would have, that was one of the issues I wanted to address in terms of the use of the word behavior. Um, but I, so I haven't provided you with some deta any details of that, but I can give you, tell you that, for example, in South Africa, the ISPA's INX kit, internet exchange points allow private peering. Um, and some of the biggest operators, the telcos in particular, um, and, and the very large ISPs, um, do not do multilateral peering at the at the IX, at, at, at the Inks IXPs, um, and they do do some private peering. So some of the traffic that's exchanged there is in fact hidden from the statistics. Um, uh, whereas the NAP Africa IXPs, the other other three uh, exchange exchange points in the same three countries, uh, three cities, offer a root server uh, which facilitates open multilateral peering. And in fact, most peers uh, do peer with everyone, um, and the the result of that, plus a slightly different business model, um, means that the NAP Africa internet exchange points, although much newer, have overtaken the Inx exchange points, both in terms of number of peers and the total amount of traffic traffic uh, exchange. Um, and this is important because um, it demonstrates that that um, the the dog in the manger attitude that some internet exchange, some ISPs have towards peering, I won't peer with you because you're not big enough, um, in fact, is, is, is self-defeating. Uh, the purpose of any kind of a contract, and by the way, most people in South Africa and elsewhere peer without a contract, is a shake of hands or even a virtual shake of hands, but the purpose of a contract is that both parties must gain benefit. And whether... I gain more, more benefit than you, or you gain more benefit than I, is irrelevant, provided we both gain benefit. And I have a mathematical model which I can share with people that can demonstrate in almost all circumstances it is in the, in, in, in the, in the um, interest of all parties to peer, even if one, if the ratio between the size of the part of, of the internet exchange points is, is millions to one. The only exception is the tier one ISPs. And there are no tier one ISPs resident in Africa, although there are tier one ISPs peering and connecting in Africa. Um, that tier one ISPs are, are, are um, a small and select club insofar as they can connect, they can transport data anywhere without paying someone else to, for, for transit. Um, and we have various um, entities in Africa, including Telcom South Africa, for example, who used to think it was a tier one ISP until they worked out that that wasn't quite true. Um, and um, so, so open multilateral peering really does make a big difference. And almost all the internet exchange points in Africa outside South Africa have mandatory multilateral peering and operating as quickly as a result. Internet exchange points are cheap and simple to build. It does not cost millions of dollars to build an internet exchange point. You need a switch. That's it. Okay, you can have a backup switch if you like. And you can put in a data center which has power and, 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 and air conditioning and fire protection and so on. But it's just a switch. The problem is the politics remain devilishly difficult. It's not a case that if you build it, they will come. Uh, and just to give you an example, in 2005, um, I gave a lecture on BGP in Benin, uh, in French, um, and uh, it was agreed at that meeting in 2005 that they would set up an internet exchange point immediately, and they identified the people who were going to be there, including the local telco, and they were just going to sort out where they would put it. Well, it took them eight years to sort out where to put it. This is the politics. Um, so one must never forget how important the politics are in terms of building an exchange point. And more to the point, once you've built it, 
getting the participants, the peers, to behave even-handedly and well at that exchange point. Thank you. That's all I have to say. I think William will hear us. Are there any questions for him? William, can you hear us? I can. Thank you. Okay. There are people coming to the mic. Cool. Hello, William. It's Andrew here from Liquid. Hello, Andrew Owen. Uh, oh, no, Alston. Okay. You, you know, guy who causes, cre oh, causes you Alston. grief. Oh, my goodness. That Andrew, I didn't recognize your voice. Hello, hello. So, are you well? Oh, I'm, I'm well. Um, <laughs> I listened to your presentation and I was listening quite carefully, but there were certain things that I, I disagree with. Okay. Um, firstly, on the multilateral peering, there are also very good reasons for not being on root servers. It's mm -hmm. far easier when a peer starts giving problems if you've got direct sessions to turn off one session than to start adding communities and goodness knows what to filter out roots and the rest of it. So there are reasons and I think that one of the dangers we have when constantly pushing root servers is that peers become particularly the smaller guys begin to believe that the peer is the root server um, you know the, the exchange is the root server and so it becomes very difficult for people who aren't on those root servers to get peered and that's not in anyone's interests and we need to start acknowledging bilateral peering far more because otherwise there is a real danger there and I've certainly seen it in Kenya I've seen it in Tanzania on South Africa, we are on the root servers. Um, at the moment, we are. Whether or not we'll stay on root servers long term here, well, that depends on the behavior of the exchange. Oh, wow. This <laughs> Well, I certainly shut him up. He just gave up. Oh, when he comes back, I'm going to give him such grief over that. Exercise the stuffy feet now. How can you do that? Is he on holiday? I have. He's at his house. He's at the, no, that's his house. That's his upstairs office. I don't think he peered with us. <laughs> nope, he's not on swing. Do, do you want me to represent him? Um, yeah, you're, you're yeah, welcome. You the person whom you're trying to reach is currently unavailable. Please leave a message after the beep. Try and represent him. Go ahead. So, so th that, was, that was my first thing. We need to be very careful about trying to tie internet exchanges to the root servers because there are people who are doing bilateral and there are good reasons for it. And this message about the root servers that's being constantly preached is actually causing some problems for those who are doing bilateral. And, and just to interject there quickly, we have the NAP Africa team on public record saying that they don't advocate that the root servers are for everybody because they spend the majority of their support time dealing with issues, technical issues of people who misunderstand how root servers work and think that a root server is a router yes. and that the entire content of their exchange traffic is going through the router that is called the root server. Okay. My, my reply to that would be that the study that we did that got this information was more about domain names and the relationship and what we were trying to do with this particular talk was show the relationship between exchange points and domain names and the fact that the two grow symbi symbiotically together. Available. That was what we were trying Please to do. Whether or not you use a root name server or um, peer individually with each other at an exchange point is somewhat off topic. Go away. Um, then, then I've got one more comment. The statement that Peering is always cheaper. Today, 
In Africa, that is true in most cases. I wouldn't say all. But those days are lumbered. In Europe at the moment, it is significantly cheaper to buy transit than to do peering, unless you're doing massive volumes. And so I would just say that we need to also be aware of that and work out what the case is when it's not just about money anymore. There are, two, there are a number of reasons that you peer. One, it's cheaper. Two, the packets haven't got to go from mm -hmm. here to the US, to the UK, and back here again. Uh, three, uh, it should be possible to have a lot more local bandwidth than the amount of bandwidth you buy internationally in order to do that. So it's not just about price. And I would have thought that even in Europe, it's not just about price, it's your, your uh, connectivity and redundancy and the, the size of the pipes that you might have with people, even if the peering does cost more than transit. Except for the fact that people keep mm -hmm. their transit links far less congested because they watch those more closely than their peering links. The number of times that you hit saturated peering links and you turn it down and you find that you get decent connectivity over their transits because they've been watching it more closely. I'm just saying that we need to be aware of these things. Yeah, I'd love to have that problem. And yeah. we need to, when, when talking about peering, my message here is simple. We've got to give people both sides of the picture, right? Because if people are peering and they're not aware of the fact that they're saturating their peering links, this is something that's got to be monitored. It's got to actually be worked at. And we've got to present a holistic picture rather than just the rosy face of it. That's all I'm saying. Point taken. Ben from Work Online. Um, hi, William. <laughs> Can I, don't back you, I don't know why you volunteered for this, but you did. Oh, is William back? Hey, William. It's Ben here from Work Online. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, lost, I, I missed most of, most of a Andrew's questions. Um, but I can, from what I little I did, I did hear, if I could respond. Um, I was very clear that, that, firstly, that hearing is only sometimes cheaper. It's not always cheap. And South Africa is one of those particular instances where it's not cheaper. Um, because, <laughs> as Mark will attest, it's actually cheaper to peer in London than in, in <laughs> Okay, well, William, William the, I'm going to cut you off because you, you obviously have a touched the on this and, and a root server are not synonymous. Um, I fully understand Andrew's reasons of why, firstly, uh, uh, his reasoning why for a larger ISP, um, he might prefer to have individual sessions. Uh, it is, of course, more work, um, but that's fine. If you, have, if you can afford to, to, to employ someone to look after it, then that's cool. It's not an, it's not an issue. Um, for smaller ISPs, a root server um, approach works well for them because it's a, it's a more painful one. But even when you do have a root server, you still need to build in filters. You must, you must treat it like you would treat any other, any other uh, uh, um, uh, uh, peering session and not just blindly assume that everything you receive by BGP, whether it's from a, a directly from a peer or if it's from uh, a number of peers via a root server, don't assume that it's right. Don't assume the other guy is not going to make a mistake. Um, so you have to you have to uh, uh, address that. Um, and then the 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 mm -hmm. other issue about about um, about uh, looking after your peering links. Uh, why would your peering links not be more as at least as important as your as your transit links? Um, they both cost you money. Uh, you, you, and they're both important for the for the um, performance of your network overall. And uh, uh, I think that that by arguing that people are may not be paying attention to peer, to their peer readings, and therefore peer readings are, are are not as important, um, is is the wrong argument. Well, the argument, the correct argument is, or correct discussion is that good network management means managing your network, all of it. Thanks, William. I completely Next agree. La last question. So I, ha I had a whole bunch of points that I wanted to take into issue with individually, but but in in general, I think. The, sorry, I'm speaking right into the microphone. Maybe 
turn your volume up. Um, no, in, 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 in general, I, I think that the point... Sorry, Ben, still here from Work Online. The point? The, the point that's made overall in, the, in your presentation that there is a direct correlation between um, domain uptake and the presence of an IXP in a country and a functioning IXP in a country is well taken and the, the reasons for that are fairly obvious. But I would suggest that in future versions of this this presentation. If you want to go into the details of how the peering ecosystem works, I think a little bit more focus on the complexities and nuances around peering rather than making general statements like, for example, it always improves performance or it always drives down cost or it's always simpler to operate via a root server would be le best omitted or expanded on. But I don't uh, think any of those statements were made, but I hear what you say. Thank you. Thank you very much, William. There's no more, uh, well, there are no more questions because I cut off the mics, but thank you very much for your time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pleasure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks. All right. Cheers. Uh, so